This is Don't Panic, episode number 201, recorded April 30th, 2018, Echo for Kids. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, the technology podcast on gadgets, the internet, and the most important thing you. I'm Sean Jennings, joined as always by two guys who would do anything for love, but they won't do that. It's Colby Rabideau and Dan Miller. Hello, <laughs> gentlemen. Hello, What's Sean. Up? Welcome to the welcome to the show this evening. What's going on? What's the good word? I'm going to try and do more musical themed openings now that a certain somebody of us works at a music company. Aha. Um, uh-huh. And we'll see. We'll see how long that's going to last. Do you about. do any windmill themed openings? Uh, and and I'm joined as always by two guys who can. What do windmills do? They they grind grain, I, right? They grind grain. Yeah. I thought about this a lot. They they get tilted at sometimes by confused Spanish conquistadors, and you do mini golf through them. Sometimes joined by two guys, you can hit a golf ball through. It's cold <laughs> and damn it. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> That one, we might have to workshop that one. Uh, but it's a I have a question for both of you. Okay. Which is more boring? Of I'm going to give you three options. Fishing. Golfing. Bird watching. Who are you with? Who are you That's with? That's a good question. Mm, I like that. Same people, different people. Do you get to pick I the people? I would say that you aren't you aren't with anyone. This isn't this is oh, about alone. the activity itself. Interesting. So I've never been golfing or mini golfing. <laughs> right. I don't know if you, you meant which this. one of those you meant. Uh, golfing. Like the big big golf. Golfing. Right, like adult golf. PGA golf. Yeah, the real deal. Uh, yeah, I've never done that. That doesn't seem so bad if there was no one else around. Like, if I had the whole golf course to myself to just, like, fuck around, that'd be pretty awesome. Uh, but I don't point. see that happening. Yeah, you're just going to have uh, a lot of angry people behind you wondering what's taking you so long. <laughs> right. You know, that's, right. that's the only one of the three you actually have. You know, there are people behind, you know, it is a sport, a, you know. Uh, fishing. I've been fishing in a long time. It could be fun. Again, I don't know if I'd want to catch a fish. Really, I feel like I'd I'd have more fun just like chilling out. Maybe I would have a fishing pole, but not actually do any fishing. Sure, and I think that is a good realization to to have. Mm-hmm. Is that it's yeah, it's not. These things are not. I think some of these sports are not about the sport itself it's more of an excuse to have a boat and go out on it and go fishing right Right. or be outside in the sun golf i i assume golf is like a uh an excuse to go talk to people right like that's what you do when you're golfing like can be i think it can be or it's just an excuse to be in like a really nice outdoor environment when it's nice out Mm. get on the office Right, and oh, like, and some, sometimes it, it's an nice excuse to, to do business outside. That's true. Right. That's true. I've, I've never business golfed either. I don't know mm-hmm. if that was. You know, some say that's the best kind of golfing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think there's business golfing, and then there's mini golfing, and those are your two kinds of golf. <laughs> <laughs> you right, don't sometimes do called big golf, sometimes called business golfing. Business golf. What are you guys doing? <laughs> We're doing business golf. Uh, now, Sean, you've been business golfing. I went business golfing once, uh, and it was an absolute disaster, uh, and I will never do it again in my life. No, I think <laughs> I think between those three, as long as you promised me there was no expectation of my performance at any of the three, like I wasn't expected, I wasn't going to be judged or expected to be good, I'd probably choose fishing, just because I think... Choose fishing as what? The least boring or the most boring? The least boring. Okay. Or at least I'm sorry. But that I was the question. The... What's the most boring? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you you meant the one I would be willing to do. Of course, no. I phrased the question through my lens. Uh, no. Which is the least boring? No. Which one's the most boring? Bird watching. Okay. For sure. I don't even think it's close because it's just so passive. Now, if it were bird shooting, <laughs> that's yeah, right. Then we can talk. More, like it, but how much more passive is it than fishing? You could be out there all day and not catch anything. Yeah, but that just means you're not good at it. 
<laughs> or, the, or the fish are. At least there's the opportunity for action. You know, in bird watching, there is a zero percent chance you're gonna get some action. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. I don't know. What do you think, Dan? Uh, well, I read this interesting article uh, that got me uh, passively interested in bird watching. Okay. So well, you're in a good place ho- for it. New York City's uh, known for some bird watching. It, it actually is. Uh, but uh, so one of my hobbies, and you know, I'm a, I'm a very busy man with lots of you know interesting hobbies, is just to go on Google Maps and look at stuff that looks weird, and then look those things up on Wikipedia, and then just do that for like an hour. Okay. You know, <laughs> No. Like weird looking islands. Like, well, I didn't know there was an island off the coast of like Georgia. Like, what happened on this island? What's the history of this island? Did um, you, uh, is that how you found the Faroe Islands? <laughs> no, oh. no, but it, it it very well could have been. Maybe <laughs> maybe that trip was what really you know set me on this path. Um, so I was doing this off the coast of Alaska for some reason, and I saw this like. I was wondering, oh, I remember. I was trying to figure out what is the westernmost point in Alaska. And it turns out it's not the uh, the tip of the Aleutian Islands, which is that island chain that's sort of at the bear's feet of Alaska. And mm. it's this island kind of out in the middle of nowhere that is the site of this. I promise you, I'm getting to where mm. bird watch. Oh, comes we're in. listening. The site of the only terrestrial battle fought on u.s soil in world war ii or i think the, the only terrestrial battle like since the spanish-american war uh and like the japanese invaded it and we took it back so that when they like the japanese built these temporary landing strips which is you level some ground and then just roll out a mat mm-hmm. basically uh but it's been long long abandoned no one lives there it's not necessarily poor environment i mean it gets kind of cold in the winter but there's no reason to it's pretty remote uh but for there are two sets of people who visit this island one set of people are bird watchers because every remote island has their own set of birds and i learned that one way that you can bird watch is to be is to play it like pokemon you want to see every bird Mm mm-hmm and a great way to see every bird is to go to these remote islands because every bird you see will be one that you hadn't seen before. You get to like you get so many bonus points. Yeah. Uh, so that's is, one it, is there like an app like Untapped for uh, for birds? <laughs> I would bet someone's had to have done that. That's a no brainer. Isn't that called Twitter? I think. Oh. Wah, wah. <laughs> uh, no. I don't know, but it probably is. <laughs> so that's one set of people the other set of people are people who fly uh regular planes and they're circumnavigating the globe because this is conveniently located in between russia and alaska mm. it's a great place to stop and what they do is they pay people to drop off fuel gas on the island beforehand so they can fuel up and keep going but not many people stop there uh but some people do so this one guy did a couple of years ago, and there there's like abandoned military buildings, and that's it. And he he sets down, and it's in the summer, so it's like 60 degrees. He's like, you know, this isn't bad. I'll like pitch my tent here instead of getting in the plane. Like, he's not in any rush. He's not trying to set a record. And then I'll keep going. And he walks into one of these buildings, just like poke around, and sees like dogs, little tiny dog-sized rats. Tons of them. Tons of them. And he fuels up his plane and leaves immediately. Mm-hmm. Just keeps flying. And apparently, these rats were brought over during World War II and have like also evolved into their own like, you know, little species, just like the birds have. Anyways, so I I don't know that bird. Wa- I don't. I feel like bird watching and fishing and golf are all the same because you don't. You're not doing it to bird watch necessarily. You're bird watching to have an excuse to go to some crazy place. Like, oh, why are you going to this island in the middle of nowhere? Why are you in Arkansas to bird watch? It's not necessarily because <laughs> I'm bird watching an excuse to do go to weird places and sit outside. Yeah. Just I, like golf is an excuse to go to weird places and sit outside. All these, you know, destination golf courses. Mm. That's, that's that's my rant. No. Sounds like Colby, you sound unconvinced. 
When you say dog size rats, what dogs come in many shapes and sizes? Not like a not like a Great Dane. I think more like more like a uh, Boston Terrier. Oh, okay. That's a big rat, though. Yes. And um, and what and what he impressed upon you in the article is how many of them there were. It wasn't like he saw a big rat. It was many big rats. Right, because there are also no predators on the mm. side. Just oh, predators. right. It's like Canadian geese in Boston. <laughs> is that there are no uh, predators for Canadian geese? No. What about the Boston so nice? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I I would venture that if if a Boston Terrier tried to take on a pack of Canadian geese, uh, I would be the watching. geese would the geese would win, and it would be horrifying. Um, the problem with the Canadian geese here is they roll like thirty deep. Mm-hmm. Like they it's not just like there's two there's there's thirty of them, um, which I dare say is enough to like take you know, however many humans are around at any given time. Mm-hmm. Which take is terrifying. humans? I think I think if they wanted they wanted to take a person, they could take a person. Now why why do you think they haven't? Is this like a, an understanding that was reached at some point between the people of Boston and these I don't know maybe. these uh, geese that are holding think, them hostage? <laughs> I, Blink I, twice, I, Colby, if <laughs> <laughs> I think they just haven't run out of food yet, but I think the day's coming. Mm. That like their 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 numbers will finally reach critical the great mass. Geese food war of twenty twenty. Yes, and then then they'll start taking us. Um, I'm thinking about this because like spring is sprung and and soon, right. s- soon soon it'll be it'll be that time of year again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but alas, rodents. What are you gonna do? The worst geese, the rodents of the sky. <laughs> I think that's what they call them. That's what Canada calls them. Um, <laughs> wonderful. Was, was that was that your piece of banter, Dan? That you wanted? That was, to... that was okay. my banter. Okay. If, I just want to make sure we got to it. You had to had to play my fun Google Maps game. Uh, I'm happy to do it. Anytime. Well, well, why don't we tell the folks at home, uh, who, including those who are watching us live right now on twitchtv slash show and facebookcom slash uh why don't you find your most interesting place on Google Maps and send it to us at don'tpanicshow@gmail.com yes. or tweet it at us at don'tpanicshow and we'll talk Please about it next me. week or right now actually if you tweet it at us right now maybe during the show we'll talk about it but uh, oh find God. some interesting place I'm so excited yep yep make Dan's day you know what tweet it at us and also at Jazz Dan and make sure yes. Dan sees it and he'll and he'll he'll have a real treat I will it's at least we which it. Dan Jazz Dan the Jazz Dan. <laughs> the one and only Jazz Dan. That, oh, about that much I can say. Yep. <laughs> yep. The original Jazz Dan, except <laughs> no imitation. Um, Perfect. Anything else going on, gentlemen? Or is that glad? I'm glad it's not latest. cold anymore. Although it was cold today. Mm. It was a little cold. I messed up and like only had a light sweatshirt. Like a chump. It's hard this time oh, yeah. of year. I didn't mess up again. I refuse. Mm. Good for you. Mm. I That's, will not back down. Very confident. That's why I'm since since like early March. I've been wearing my like spring jacket <laughs> just on principle every day. Um, but today it finally got warm, so I switched to a light sweatshirt. Uh, and now <laughs> then it was cold again. I don't know. Well, tomorrow's May first, so we, we got to turn this around. With you. Yes, oh, boy. Thank God we're missing it this year. How many brands do you think will toot? I didn't see a lot of April Fools this year, but I think that was because that fell on a weekend. Mm. Mm. I'm sure we all know that brands don't work on weekends. Hey, as so- as someone who runs a brand, I can tell you they do not. My <laughs> my brand takes the weekend off. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Uh-uh. Is no exciting roofing news hap- breaking on a Sunday night. If there is, I'm not paying attention, so I'm, I'm, I take my weekends off. We are a Monday through Friday operation. Very cool. um, all right, well, then, if that's the case, we can roll into, into the... We got a lot of tech news this week, which is exciting. We usually don't, yeah. and the rundown's a beefy. We got a beefy rundown this week. Um, Taco Bell would, would sell it for a buck. It's that beefy. So <laughs> where, uh, where do you guys want to start in this rundown um, with the news? 
Uh, let's start with the big the big news: Sprint and T-Mobile. Sprint and T-Mobile. Now, I swear we've talked about the the we threat of this before. Definitely have. It was going to happen, and then it didn't. Yep. Uh, we talked about it again. then, and I think we talked about it when it was getting rumored recently in like 2017, 2018. Yeah, I mean, the, I think the big thing that held it back all those years ago was regulatory approval. They didn't think they'd get the approval under the Obama administration. It's different days now. So T-Mobile and Sprint have announced that they officially have reached a two, a $26.5 billion merger agreement. If approved, it would combine the third and fourth largest carriers in the U.S., uh, making them third place behind Verizon and AT&T. Let's break down how this would work. First... The merger would not complete until well after, they say it'll take three to four years, and even after that, it's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of time to merge these guys. Um, so you won't, you'll still have T-Mobile and Sprint operating past 2020. It'll, it'll take a good amount of time. Uh, this, of course, is T-Mobile, Sprint, but also their sub-brands, Metro, PCS, Boost Mobile, and Virgin Mobile are also included. Um, but it's likely most will be merged into T-Mobile. That will be the name of the company that moves forward. Sprint brand is likely to go away. They claim the advantage to you, the consumer, or cheaper prices. They don't really say how that's going to work. Uh, but they do say it's going to speed up 5G rollout because it's interesting. 5G? 5G. So it's one more than 4G, not quite 6G. Mm -hmm. Um, and what's interesting is that these two companies have different uh, realms of spectrum in, in, the, in the high, mid, and low bands. Um, and separately, they don't quite have the right spectrum to make it work. But when you smash them together, their theory is we finally have the full range of spectrum we need, like a Verizon or AT&T, to fully roll out. Wait, that's crazy. It that's is. That's why they're merging is because of some other regulatory problem? I would say that's why they're merging, but it certainly is part of it. It certainly is part of it. They would struggle separately to, to roll out 5G uh, based on the spectrum that they have. Uh, Sprint has really gross spectrum. T-Mobile's not bad, not as bad. That's, I think, why T-Mobile's kind of the leader here. What does it mean to have gross spectrum? It's just not as valuable. They, 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 got, they got that 2G, 3G spectrum. Uh, they, they're not going to be able to pump enough Gs through that spectrum. <laughs> no okay, Gs. shut. Yeah, I'm really simplifying it for the folks at home. I can right. now is now is this the same thing when when the when they like the in like uh Top Gun when they're experiencing like twelve G's, is that is that the same unit of measure we're talking about here? Hundred percent, Dan. I'm glad you made that uh. parallel between what we're talking about in the film Top Gun. <laughs> Very similar. Very similar. It usually it does apply. Mm-hmm. Um, now, T-Mobile parent company would hold 42% of the combined company. Sprint majority owner SoftBank would get 27%, and the rest would be publicly held. Um, it would be held, uh, led by current T-Mobile CEO John Laguerre, um, who you may know as the sort of uncarrier guy who's kind of the face of the company. Sort of crazy. I saw the, the picture of the Sprint CEO I've never seen before. And that guy saying saying next to each other, they couldn't look, they couldn't look like two more different people. Absolutely. Yeah, no, there's a reason, again, why T-Mobile's taking the lead here. Uh, one other interesting thing to know, a lot of these attempted mergers have a, what they call a breakup fee. If the merger doesn't go through, they have to pay each other for the hassle. Uh, no breakup fees here, so they're, they're kind of upfront saying that, hey, you know, this is a risky opportunity, but they feel the regulatory mm -hmm. environment will do them favors. Uh, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but right now Verizon Wireless has around 116 million subscribers. Uh, AT&T has around 93, and the combined company would have about 90. So very close, right right below there. And that's sort of the scoop. Interesting. Yeah. So nothing's really going to change, though, for a while? No. So assuming it gets approved by the individual shareholders and the regulators, no, it's going to take a long time um, for, for them to merge. They have to change all the stores over. They have to change all, all of the, like... It said somewhere in this article that they have to switch the the Sprint phones won't necessarily work with the T-Mobile network, so they have to. Mm -hmm. That's why it takes so many years. They got to phase everybody off. Um, they say Sprint customers would be moved to T-Mobile's network within three years. So this and, would be okay. fascinating as a merger. Yes. Uh, yeah, I wonder. I guess, I guess need to learn more about how cell phones work. I didn't realize. I guess I knew that Sprint was kind of weird, like Verizon is kind of weird. Mm. Sprint was, well, from what I remember, Sprint is to a Verizon as T-Mobile is the AT&T. 
he was like Verizon did the CDMA thing, right? And uh, AT and T and T Mobile are the other one. Yeah. Um, now the way I understand it is that when everyone was supposed to move to 4G, it was supposed to solve that problem. That mm-hmm. that was more of a three because it was uh, CDMA and GSM, mm-hmm. and 4G was supposed to solve most of those problems. And I think T-Mobile did an okay issue. And and again, I'm vastly oversimplifying it. I think Sprint never quite did it right. They had issues mm-hmm. and they tried a different version of LTE 4G that didn't pan out, so they tried to switch back over. I think that's why Sprint is kind of in in terms of network quality some of the crappiest. You know, mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. not as valuable as some of these other companies. That's that's part of the issue. Not enough G's. No, and you know they're 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 really Before. scrambling for for dem G's. Aren't we no. all? Mm, <laughs> that grind. I didn't realize that Sprint. T-Mobile, Metro PCS, Boost Mobile, and Virgin Mobile were all somehow related to each other. Well, not that... I don't know. That, I guess it, to say that another way, Metro PCS, Boost Mobile, and Virgin Mobile are all somehow related to T-Mobile and or Sprint. Yeah, they run off of their wireless networks. I don't know how the ownership works, exactly how much of each of those they own, um, but they do run off of uh, the, their respective networks. So... Um, it will certainly impact them. I, uh... Yeah, I guess I guess the big question is, will regulators approve it? Uh, is really the, the only holdup at this point. Regulation? What regulation? All this red tape in Washington, Dan. Right. <laughs> uh, no, I think they will. I don't, I mean, what do I know? I have no idea. Well, but it, it's 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 crazy to me because right now they're fighting in court. The government doesn't want um, Time Warner and AT and T to AT and T to buy Time Warner, and the government said no, and now AT and T is suing the government. So it's interesting right. if they're going to cherry pick these cases of of okay, we'll let some mergers go through and not others. Um, I, I don't think this is a slam dunk. I, th- I think that the current regulatory environment is a little too unpredictable for for that. Mm-hmm. And I think this is an interesting case where I think if we had seven or eight wireless providers and these guys were merging, I don't think it would be as big of a deal. But going from four to three, I think you... What you about really... uh, Boost Mobile? Well, that's 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 part of this. I know. I that's I, But it's funny. I mean, apparently in this article they talked about in their sort of proposal to the government they said oh we have seven eight competitors but they couldn't list any they wouldn't they wouldn't list who they were and the suspicion is because they don't exist (laughs) um and they can just wholesale make shit up so um huh it is interesting like on the one hand you could imagine uh uh some sort of t-mobile sprint conglomeration like being able to compete better with verizon and at&t and like maybe, I don't know. Like maybe it would make prices cheaper a little. But on the other, like they wouldn't be competing with each other anymore. And for people who live, people like well, I don't know. I don't know what using T-Mobile is like in non-urban areas. I mean, I also have no idea what using Sprint is like. Yeah, I don't know how they compare, but it's definitely worse than in urban areas. Yeah, uh, but it's also gotten a lot better than it was four years ago. Mm. Yeah, I think that's true. I don't know. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think I get, I get the spectrum argument. I mean, I think that that's a that's a clear issue these companies are having. But I, I certainly think you can make the argument that. These two companies having to compete with each other, Sprint and T-Mobile, over the years against Verizon and AT&T has led to innovation in self in the cell space, in, in cellular, and how, how the, the products are sold, in the benefits mm. and features they offer to consumers. I think if you didn't have these companies pushing... I mean, Unlimited was gone for a long time, and these were the guys who brought it back and forced Verizon That's and true. AT&T to, to do it. And I, you know, as soon as you start cutting cutting these numbers down to three and two and... You know, that's when they can sort of start to play ball with each other. And I don't want to say collusion, but, you know, you start to get they, they all, you know, you notice all of a sudden they all cost the same and those costs start going up and it gets. I was so sad that my my no collusion bot uh, shut down so soon. So soon after I picked it. 
Yeah, those Twitter fads, man, they don't last. No. No collusion. Sadly not. Uh, um, <laughs> the, what was I going to say? Oh, the, didn't the, uh, the no contract cell phone stuff start with T-Mobile? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. But I don't think, I think three is the minimum. I mean, obviously two is the minimum. <laughs> <laughs> but I think at three is as low as I would want to go. Yeah. And it sounds like they are significantly far behind from these other two, so. Yeah. Uh, whoever these people are, which you talked about, who are sticking with AT&T, I don't... They're out, of, they're out of their minds. Not a fan of AT&T. I mean, I've never used AT&T, but it sounds terrible. What about it? It sounds terrible. Uh, that the service, the service in both sense of the word is so bad. It's mm-hmm. the all and the price is it's the cost of Verizon with the same terrible service, and uh, not the same good cell service. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I get that. AT and T is ex- is very expensive. I mean, not that Verizon's cheap, but I always found whenever every year or two, I'm always re evaluating carriers because i don't hold any allegiance at&t is always very ex- i can never make the numbers work on at&t to switch because they're always very expensive yeah crazy so we'll have to see uh what uh you know i have a feeling uh you know democrats will fight it republicans will endorse it and you know it's up to the president's whims so we'll see <laughs> if this one goes through but stay tuned to don't panic for full updates indeed indeed all right guys what's next What's the most boring Apple rumor that we've ever covered? Um. Oh, sorry. I I, I misread this. It says bogus. Bogus. Uh, <laughs> oh no, because I don't believe it. Because I don't think it's real. No, it's not boring. I just don't buy it. I mean, I, I would be able to think of the most boring one. I guess the education stuff was pretty boring. Yeah, HomePod. Some of the early HomePod rumors were pretty. Boring. Yeah. HomePod is kind of boring too. Yeah, some someone told me that they stopped selling the HomePod already. No, no. they we didn't we didn't there was a story we didn't talk about it on the show but they they slowed production. Oh, I see. Significantly, um, and yeah, there's issues for sure. Um, this story, a rumor that we can talk about this. I do not believe this is accurate or real at all, but. Uh, a story in uh, CNET and also in Bloomberg uh, cited a person familiar with the plans that Apple is working on a VR and AR headset. Uh, this uh, Bloomberg 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 Business Week. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, okay. it will reportedly arrive in 2020. Um, the report describes a headset that has an 8K display for each eye. Uh, mm. the, the headset mm. will have cameras that detect the surroundings. Now, Sean, what's the relationship between K's and G's? Okay, so what it is, it's a ratio. So for every uh-huh. four Ks, you get two and a half Gs. Oh. Okay, and you got to do the multiplication, uh-huh. right? And they don't even get me started on Ls because that's a whole nother thing. Right, okay. Right? But that's how, that's how you convert between the two. You got to remember that formula. Got it. It's kind of <laughs> like that, Fahrenheit That must Celsius. be an imperial system, yeah, okay. Um, the headset uh, will connect to a dedicated box through high-speed wireless tech called YGIG, which we've talked about on the show before. That's Intel's uh, high-speed wireless standard that they think headsets are going to be using in the future. The box will be powered by a 5-nanometer proprietary Apple processor. Um, it, it, this, this is an as-yet unreleased chip because the current mm-hmm. A11 Bionic processor is only is uh, 10 nanometers, so it's something they don't even make currently. Um it uh, is codenamed T288, um, and as I said, will reportedly arrive in 2020. But is that's that a uh, Star Wars droid? You know, I have no idea what the... First, I, I first read it as T2, and I'm like, is that like a Terminator reference? <laughs> and then I saw the 88, and I'm like, all right, you've lost me. <laughs> um, well, when was Terminator 2 released? After 88. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, the question is, guys, do you think this is a thing? Do you, do you think this is a real thing? I wouldn't be surprised if it was a real thing. Uh, I know I de- I would be very surprised if it was released. Ever or in 2020? In 
2020. I mean, I would be surprised. It does. It's not one of those things. Just like, oh yeah, Apple's gonna make an AR. Is it? This is VR headset. AR well, or VR. I guess it's unclear. It says they're working on both. This, this right. specific device is VR, but they're supposedly working on both. Right. Um, I do think that my one of my big don't panic uh, hobby horses is the VR VR general VR work environment. What is the operating system for VR? Yep. And I think that Apple could do that really well if if uh, they think to, which I'm sure they have, and if they think it's a good idea, which who knows. I think that that would be one of those like no-brainer Apple products. Like if 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 they thought VR and AR was good enough, like they thought the multi-touch screen was good enough in 2007, and they were like, you know what? Let's make let's make an app store. Let's make it like iOS and an app store for VR. I think that could be great, but they would have to like super commit to it. Sean, you look you look uncompressed you look skeptical uh, i'm skeptical as hell app. and here's why because i think old apple would do something like that new apple makes what version of ios are we on ios 11 which yeah. is kind of crappy it's not great and the interface what? isn't great oh. and, it's not good. and we talked about this on the show so don't act surprised i've, <laughs> I've held this opinion this is not new i've complained about ios 11 many a time um, but it's just, it's weird and it's clunky and it's looked like it was one of those, you know, you get enough, oh, uh, you know, I'm not going to use that analogy. You get too many cooks in the kitchen and you get a gumbo that doesn't really taste like much. And that's what would worry me about this VR project is I feel like old Apple could have done it. Apple today, I'm so suspicious that they can make a just nice, simple, easy to use VR interface. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. If they Interesting. did. Interesting. If they did. It, if, if they did, would it be like would it be like what I'm describing? Or or do you think if they were to make it that it would be just like an accessory for the iPhone or something? Uh that's a good question. I think it would be I think it would be like an extension of an iPad where I think it would run on its own. But in the same way an iPad is a bigger iPhone, I think the VR headset would be an iPad strapped to your head in terms of functionality and in terms of the types of apps and tasks you would do with it. I strongly disagree. I think that I think that uh, VR and AR are as significant of a paradigm shift as like the mouse is to touchscreen. Oh, I agree. I absolutely agree. I, I, and I'm not saying Apple should do it this way. I'm saying this is the way okay, I think just, they man, would do you're, it. You're, you're super cynical tonight. I don't like current day Apple. I really don't. I don't. I am absolutely super suspicious about everything they do because I just think they're so. You look at something like HomePod and you're like, this is so mediocre. Like it's not bad, but it's not. It's great. fine to make mediocre things. Well, that's fine, but then that's then then we have to say they're going to put out a mediocre VR headset, which is going to be like everyone else's mediocre oh. VR headsets. What, what what faith are that they're going to solve this problem that, to date, no one's really come up with? I guess my, my big contention is I disagree that iOS 11 is terrible. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe terrible is not right, but it's a bad version of iOS. It's not... <laughs> is it? I mean, what about it is worse than previous versions of iOS? I think it's I think it's bloated and buggy. I mean, this you have to remember, iOS 11 is the version where Apple finally said we're not doing yearly releases anymore and we're going to do a TikTok and we're going to have to fix all the problems and issues with it. This was the one mm-hmm. that pushed them over the edge. It's now, gotten better with updates. I'll give it credit. When it, It's better than when it first launched last year, but it is not spectacular. Interesting. Um, yeah, I've started page. But on, on VR, I, I mean... Just- I, my, my biggest issue with this story is the hardware, not the software. Yeah, I'm sure they'll whip up some software for it. It'll be somewhere between mediocre and great. But I, I'm mm. just, you, you can't come to me and say, oh, they're going to put 8K displays with these custom chips that none of this shit exists. <laughs> and, and, well, I, and I'm sure Apple has very well-funded R&D. I don't question that. But like the, you, the, the most well-funded. Uh, actually, yeah. I think Amazon spends more. In oh yeah, yeah. than they do. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, 
I'm just if you, this article had said, oh, it's a slight, it, it's it's a it's a moderate improvement over the other existing VR headsets, I'd be like, okay, I buy that. But don't be like, oh my god, they're gonna invent this new shit that doesn't, you know, no one's ever been able to do this, but Apple will. And it's like that sounds more like a PR line than it does something they'll actually. <laughs> it, it's there's one prototype of it in a in a safe somewhere that will never see the light of day. That's that's my theory. That was that was the iPad for years before the iPhone came out. And that's and this and this in seven years probably is a product, but that's that's what I think. In twenty twenty, that's there is a yeah. significantly pared down version of this that might come out then, maybe. Yeah, I guess twenty and twenty is kind of close. It seems so far away. I think it's... Apple probably has to, you know, when do they have to start manufacturing something they're going to release in twenty twenty? Certainly, in, certainly in twenty nineteen. Well, they've got a well, yeah. I guess if it is a brand, brand, brand new product with brand, brand, brand new like chips and hardware, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Um. So we'll we'll start hearing whispers. I mean, I'm sure that I'm sure they're working on something. I I just think the specifics of this are like. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever happened to the car? We used to hear about that every other week. They're still doing it. Last I read, it's just that they're the theory is that they'll never actually like go Tesla and actually build a physical car, but they're still testing stuff and they're still mapping stuff and Interesting. They're, they're I know they're still mapping things. Yeah, they're still strapping those lidars to the top of minivans and driving them around. They're still doing that. What they're gonna do with it, I don't know. That's the life. Question mark. Lidar in your minivan. The American dream. You know, that's what I keep, mm -hmm. you know, it's funny. That's what my mechanic keeps telling me. He said, Sean, your mm -hmm. car is doing well. It could really use some LiDAR, mm. you know, really pimp it out. Get the neon effects, the lift kit, and the LiDAR. You can, you can put a disco ball inside the LiDAR, fully, you know, automatically deployable disco ball. How? I cannot imagine how fast you would get pulled over and ticketed for your disco <laughs> ball LiDAR. That's got to violate at least one, if not more than one, road law. Yeah. But I love it. But I love it. It's worth it. But a bad idea. It would be cool. Um, all right. There you go. So keep it, keep an eye out for that. We'll, we'll report on that if we're st still around in 2020. <laughs> at this rate, we will be. At the, hey, look, if we can get North Korea to chill Episode out. 300. We might still be here. Um, all right, what else? What else we got in here, guys? There's still time for news. We're chugging through these stories. Colby, you got anything? You, you've been. Oh you've god, been... they're redesigning Gmail again. Yeah, I, I thought I they rolled like this the out to everyone. But they I still don't they have it did, but slowly. Account. I don't have it either. I don't have it either. I just have the. Now, they didn't redesign Gmail. They just did Google Inbox, right? So they took features from Inbox. It's I would say they just more material. What what is it? Material design is that they materialized it? Yes, yes, they materialized <laughs> it um, and just gave it a fresh coat of paint and then stole features from Inbox. Um, mm. I will do a quick run through of some of the new features you'll find in the updated Gmail. They say it's around safety and productivity, starting with safety, a new confidential mode. It allows the sender to set an expiration date for a sensitive email or to revoke it entirely. And maybe thinking, how, Sean, how does that work? That's crazy. Mm, I was just about to ask that. There you go. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, it works. They don't actually send the email. They send the person a link to the content, which lives in your mailbox and is a uh, accessed by the recipient via their Gmail account or uh, HTTPS. And in both cases, you, the sender, are in charge of how long the other party can access it. So it's like sending them a link to a Google Drive file or something like that, except the message has an expirable link. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, there is integrated rights management, which means you can block the forwarding, copying, downloading, or printing of particular messages. Uh, you know, if you're hardcore, you can still do those things. But this is a sort of a, an easy way to sort of put up a warning sign if you don't want people doing those things for your message. There's also two-factor authentication on a per-message basis, uh, which you can request the recipient authenticate with a passcode received via text message before they're able to open the confidential email, which is kind of cool. Oh, boy, let's see. There's a few other things. Email snoozing. Uh, basically, they just remind you they float emails to the top of your inbox if they need you to, if you, they think you need to take action. They also do what they call nudging, which is uh, it recognizes uh, time-sensitive action or responses. Like if you have a bill due or something, it'll automatically float it to the top of your inbox because you haven't paid it yet. 
Is that mm. the, the Gmail version of poking? More or less. Poke? Yes, bring it back, I think. I'm ready for that. Um, on the visual updates, there is a new side panel that integrates with Google's apps, including Google Calendar, Google Keep, and the new Google Tasks. Um, yeah, that's that's most of it. There's a few other things, but that, and then obviously the new the new look, which is very simple. And um, I'm still I, I joked in the spreadsheet. I'm still using the same Google theme, like from when I first got the Google account. I was going to ask you 15 years ago. Are you? I still am. Do you remember themes? When you could pick yeah, themes? Yeah, absolutely. That was a thing for five minutes. I still have mine. I forget what it is, but I know I have it custom I still, theme. My Gmail is gross because I've got, like, all of these old... Remember, like, um, they weren't the labels? Mm-hmm. And then you could... Mm-hmm. I had all of these, like, automatic labels set up. Mm-hmm. where, it would, and, and they're all, like, horrifically out of date. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you mean out of date? Give us an example. Well... So first of all, some are like integrated from apps I had plugged into Gmail and they created their for their app they created some, so those don't work. But then there's like let's see what I got in here. I have like alerts for like Foursquare. <laughs> like my Foursquare emails go into a certain thing, but I don't think Foursquare sends me email. That was back when Foursquare was a thing. Mm-hmm. I've got like I've got Marist f- flags. Oh, nice. Nice. Don't I think go anywhere? Yeah, some of these are, and I don't even know if they work. They're pretty bad. Um, among among other issues with Gmail. How many Gmail messages do you guys have in your Ooh. in your all mail? Thirteen thousand one hundred fifty-one. That's pretty good. Are you really good about deleting stuff? No. 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 What's your What's your oldest message? How can I see that? You can. Uh, I can't page through thirty-three thousand. No, pages if of... you if you click, it says one to fifty out of the total. If you click that, you can sort it to oldest first. Oh, that is the least obvious UI I've that's, ever seen. That's, they should really redesign this Whoa. thing. We're looking at uh, sep- uh, sep- July fifteenth, two thousand six. Okay. Uh, but I have... I have another older Gmail account. Okay. Oh. Oh yeah, I have another older Gmail account. My oldest is November seventh, two thousand eight, and I have forty one thousand four hundred ninety six. Wow, that's impressive. Uh, I have got twenty three thousand ninety seven, and my oldest is January of oh six, and that's that is my actual oldest. Oh my god, I've got like Hang horrific on. high school emails. These are awful. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I wrote these. Oh, Where there's like there's like bullshit things control. people forwarded me. Ooh, these are... September 1st, 2004 and my other That's one. That's pretty impressive. Oh. I, my first email is from the Gmail at at google.com. First off, welcome, and thanks for agreeing to help us test Gmail. By now, you probably know the key ways in which Gmail differs from traditional webmail services. God, remember (laughs) webmail? Oh, yeah. Mine is also from the Gmail. And then my Microsoft.net passport was my third email. Oh, my God. I've got all these emails from girls in high school. I think they were flirting with me, but I didn't realize it. <laughs> On email? Yeah. I don't know, Sean. No. <laughs> it could be. I think no. I know because I read them now, and I'm like, oh, I get what they're going for. And at the time, I might, I might not have uh, put those together. My friend sent me an email about Sheriff Joe Arpaio on sept- on October 9th, two thousand four. <laughs> what? Wow throwback throw forward maybe this should be our new segment where we just find old (laughs) hilarious shit in our in our ancient email inboxes oh uh one of my like my seventh email is a welcome to myspace account confirmation Ooh, nice that is awesome (laughs) <laughs> emails with my plain text password in them 
and we're, we could be here all night. Yeah, I'm sure people are really enjoying us reading. This old is great emails. radio. But uh, yeah, pretty oh. pretty spectacular. Actually, a significant chunk of the the beginning emails are just like MySpace notification. <laughs> I'm very glad I never had one of those. I'm very I'm very proud of my 2004 start date. Mine was 2005. But alas, no no one should ever see this. This is this this yes. should be lost lost to history. Oh God, we uh we're gonna we're gonna move on here. <laughs> Oh boy. This is a slippery slope. Um, is there any other news in here you guys really wanted to get to? Before we moved on, we've got uh, 3D Touch, Snapchat, Snapticals, uh, Amazon in your car trunk, Echo for Kids. Well, so what was the deal with the Golden State Killer? So uh, what it is is he was a bad guy and he killed and raped a bunch of people, which I wouldn't recommend. Uh, but in order to get him, what they did is there's a website called GED Match. Uh, or Ged Match, uh, and it is a website where people share their genetic information entirely in public. That's the point of the site. It's a research site. Oh. So some of the early reporting was like, oh, it was a genealogy site. It really mm. wasn't. It was more of a mm. research site, and investigators were absolutely legally allowed to use the information. And what they Whoa. did was they scanned it and compared it, found a distant, put that in quotations, distant relative of the DNA they found at the crime scenes and were able to trace back through genealogy of the person whose DNA they partially matched relatives who would have been of the right age and in the right location at the times of these killings. And then were able to make a match to, to the actual killer. It's crazy. Now see, this reminds me of the Cambridge Analytica stuff. Yeah. Right. Like friends of like, friends. Right, right. DNA is sharing. You're not just sharing your DNA. You're sharing the DNA of your family, which is weird and uncomfortable. Yep. Not that I'm planning on being hunted down by my DNA at any point, but like. <laughs> well, and interestingly enough, this isn't the first time this has happened. Other other crimes have been solved using what? similar methods. This oh, is kind man. of the most high profile, but using partial DNA matches uh, of relatives. That is crazy. Yep. It is crazy. I want privacy. Where's where's the privacy policy for my blood? DNA? <laughs> yeah. No, there there is no, Welcome to the future, Colby. There is none. Awkward. Your okay. future is gone. <laughs> yes, it is. It's um, all over. Uh, let's see. Anything else? As far as what? About DNA? News? Oh. News? Oh. Uh, uh, are we going to let Amazon into our trunk? Did we? Uh, we didn't talk about it. We can quickly cover it. It's pretty It's that? pretty straightforward. It uses the I same... I want to know what your opinions are. Uh, but go, as, go on. As the sole car owner on the, uh, <laughs> on the <laughs> right. podcast. The only person with a trunk. With a trunk. Uh, with some junk in that trunk. No, the... <laughs> Uh, it's the same idea that they are using to unlock your front door and deliver packages in your house. The same with your car. So you have to have a GM or Volvo vehicle with an active OnStar or Volvo on call subscription. And you essentially digitally authorize them to unlock, open, close, and then relock your trunk. Uh, packages that weigh over 50 pounds are larger than a certain size, require a signature, or are valued over $1,300, or come from a third-party seller, are not eligible. Otherwise, yeah, you totally can. Uh, it's got to be a model year 2015 or newer vehicle, so basically a new car. Amazon signed a two-year contract with GM and Volvo uh, as a trial period. You just authorize it Amazon. The car will need to be parked within a certain radius of an address used for Amazon deliveries, uh, driveways, parking lots, parking garages, street parking, that kind of stuff. Um the brr, Amazon, uh, bah, 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 it says in here how you use it. Uh, if your car is not available, they back, they use a backup delivery location to find your car. Couriers will have access to its GPS location and license plate number, as well as an image of the car. Uh, they find the car, scan the package, request the vehicle to be unlocked. Um, they unlock it, place the package in, uh, close, and they cannot leave until the trunk is locked again. And that's basically the idea. So would you let Amazon in? Uh, uh, I, 
I would, but I can think of a bunch of other ways I'd rather get my packages. Yeah, I, I don't understand who this is convenient for. I mean, I guess this is... I Again, I'm not going to dis... I think it is convenient. I just think it's the least convenient of all the convenient options. <laughs> you know, like, I would rather have it either delivered at my front door, inside my front door, at an Amazon locker, at a physical store location, to my office like a bunch of other places that aren't them opening up my cart. Like it, my cart trunk gets hot. It sits out in the sun all day. Mm-hmm. Like that's the first thing I'd be concerned about is anything in there is going to be toasty by the time I, uh, by the time I get to it. Mm. That's interesting. I hadn't thought of that. Um, I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I agree. If they can let put, if I'm gonna let someone into my, I guess the trunk isn't as bad as your house, isn't as risky. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but I feel like I, if I'm gonna take a risk, I might as well go all the way, you know? Yeah, well, and it just saves you extra hassle just to have. A if I had a car, home. I would totally use that here because I can't get any packages delivered to my place, such as my trophy, uh, and. So I have to do the dance where, like, UPS is going to come tomorrow or USPS, and then they won't be able to drop it off. Then I'm going to have to go to the post office and pick it up, which is fine. But I wish you guys be like, put it in my trunk. That would be great. You should, you should ask the USPS to do that. Just be like, just put it in my trunk. Just put it in my trunk. I'm sure they'd be yeah. very appreciative. I'll write that. it on the back of the, the misdelivery yep. slip. Yep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, if they're, if Amazon's goal is we'll deliver your package literally anywhere, then I kind of get, I kind of get where they're going with this, just more options for shit, but it's, uh, it's goofy. It's a, it's a goofy idea. I don't know who this, I agree, I don't know who this is for. And especially because you have to have a, a relatively new GM or Volvo vehicle with an active subscription. It's like such a narrow slice of people this applies to. Mm -hmm. But, Mm mm-hmm. It is interesting, nonetheless. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Um. All right. Does uh Does anyone have picks? No. 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 No, no, no. picks. No, that's it. We're picked out. Go look at your old Gmail messages. I don't want to. <laughs> it's traumatizing. Yeah. What if I? Maybe bit. I'll just search my inbox for picks and see see what comes up. <laughs> Oh, there are a lot of emails. Hundreds. Picks. It says hundreds. Of Lots of spam, I'm imagining. I'm going to just look for... It's a tough to scroll through these only emails because there's no spam detection, so it's just crammed with spam. Oh, I delete all that. So my, my like, 20 something thousand are actual emails worth keeping. What? Run! Yeah. Yeah. No way. 20,000. Oh, 20, 23,000. Get out of town. They, they have some value to me. In that I I, do, I clean my inbox all the time. Whoa. Yep. I sort of just want to check the the box and like delete them all, but I feel like I can't do that because there's like definitely a, a a trickle. There's a trickle of things that are like I don't know some receipt for something or like some information about oh, yeah. something else that is probably useful. I, I was. Or, I mean. Not useful, but like could be necessary to have one day. I I was organizing my paperwork, like my adult paperwork, uh, the other day, and I realized how much of it's digital. Like we're all the receipt, like all all the paper. If my Gmail went away, like I would lose so much. Here, Colby, here's the 2010 uh room, Marist room tours schedule. From 2010 Whoa. when we were booked. Wow, we we had Saturday 11:30 to 2:30. Man, what a what a what a time in our lives, Sean. What a treat that was, hanging around, playing video games, eating Quiznos, having a good time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we did we did get Quiznos every time. Yep. I played a lot of Assassin's Creed while we were giving room tours. I watched you play a lot of Assassin's Creed. <laughs> that was a treat. Better than watching uh, Michael Fassbender do it. So, <laughs> oh no. Yep. Wow. Well, 
Okay, well, I guess we won't do picks this week. No picks. Maybe next time. No any, picks. any other? Maybe next time if you're lucky. We'll do double picks. Do you guys, how about this? It's the end of the episode, so people, if they want to leave, they're welcome to. We're not going to hold them hostage. Yeah. Let's do uh, the Don't Panic official Westworld Minute. Oh. This Westworld new episode thing. last night. Okay. Of All Westworld. Right. If people don't want to be, spoiler alert, we will yeah. spoil it. Sound so. the siren. <laughs> spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Please evacuate the premises. Um, yeah, Westworld, man. That that, okay. that, that show be cray. Whew. Mm-hmm. That shit, shit is going down in Westworld Town. Now, was it one of you who told me? I think it must have been Colby who was like, "That was Teddy up face down in the water." That was me. That becomes super Good important point. as of this episode. How so? Because it seems as like on the face of it, it seems like Dolores is finally like taking what? like you Sorry. know. Pulling Teddy along to her side, like he seemed, he seemed kind of pissed off. Uh, mm. More, much more understanding of her position than he was an episode ago. But we know that in two weeks he's face down in the water. But mm. now we also know why she's killing all the hosts. Oh wait, so she oh just, to bring them back, right? So is she just going to resurrect all the hosts in the lake, and then that's how she gets them. Interesting. Maybe mm-hmm. is that a, is it think... a is it a trick? Because we did we cut out we don't see Bernard after that. We might not flash forward again until we catch back up. That's true. Do you think so? I think uh, young Williams thing about mm, young Williams whatever, yes. the weapon whatever thing he's building uh, in the past that's at the center of the park has something to do with the lake that no one knew was there later. Yeah, maybe. And they're all trying to, like, get down there or something? Maybe, or maybe, like, it, there wasn't a lake, but, like, Ber- I mean, Bernard said, right? He said, like, I killed them all, right? Maybe he, like, flooded, I don't know, flooded some contraption or building or something that was filled with hosts. Mm-hmm. And they all uh, sort of floated to the top. Yeah, don't we don't I know what see that. Is. We definitely looks like there's a lot of blackmail going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So that turned out to be true. I like the flashbacks. I thought that was neat. Yeah, I really like the flashbacks. That's the kind of time jumps I like, where it's like I under yeah. like it's clear when they were taking place, and <laughs> very sequential and straightforward. Right. That was well. Neat. Now, we, now we know that they're doing that, which which makes it yeah less confusing. And I, I was very jazzed. I literally, like, the one time I, like, gasped or cheered, I don't remember which I did, uh, was when they was when they brought up the weapon. At the end, they're like, it's a weapon. I'm like, yes! Like, <laughs> like that's, I, like, I, I want this show to either be about a crazy theme park, or I want it to be, <laughs> like, just this balls-to-the-wall thriller. The like, I, I want it, the only, the only thing that's really been bugging me is I, I am just so exhausted of Dolores talking in these like witticisms and these like grand every goddamn sentence she says is like supposed to sound so profound and it's exhausting. Yes. Uh, I read an article today by the lady on decoding Westworld, Joanna Robinson about the most recent episode. Oh, and I have she, to, she, I read she, this. she points out all the, the like Jesusy references that 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 Dolores has, and like the thing with the co- Confederados, like all at the long table is oh, yeah. is like not subtle. Last supper and like <laughs> all all kinds of stuff going on. Um, so that that was interesting. I don't remember what it was called, but if you go to Vanity Fair and just if you search Google like Vanity Fair Joanna Robinson, it's the most recent article she wrote. Ah, uh, that was good. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I think the part of the show I'm enjoying the the most is Old William, Man in Black. His, oh. his he, okay. His journey, where where he's going, because I, that's that's where the action's at. That's where things he gets it. You know, he's really rolling with it. 
Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying that. It's really committing. Now, do you think in in Robot Apocalypse, are you are you still with the robots? Like, I think last year. A, a lot of people that I talked to were team robot, right? Yeah. Like they yeah. wanted the robot suit to, to achieve mm-hmm. consciousness. But now that like Dolores is talking about like taking over the outside world and stuff, uh, some people have started to waver in that. I think, uh, how, how do you feel? I did the full 180. I did the full 180. I was so team robot. And then this season I'm like, no, fuck the robots. <laughs> Can't go. I'm team human all the way. You can't go killing my people. Team guest. Yeah, I'm. I want. I'm. I'm on team Maeve. Mm. It's not about robots and humans, y'all. Uh, yeah, that's my. I have a question for both of you. Okay. Was the you remember when Dolores is looking at the skyline? She's like, I've never seen something so grand. Uh, so was profound. The, some profound. Sorry. Uh, was the pattern in those bricks the maze? Was that like the thing? Or, or like, it's not the thing inside of the skull because that's like oval shaped. But wasn't there like a wooden thing that was different that the man in black found, and it was like fooled you? It's like. The maze isn't meant for you. It would, like the little toy thing that he found. Mm-hmm. I thought that thing looked like the the act the pattern that's everywhere. Okay, maybe maybe I'm wrong. It seemed like they really they really well, put a focus on those bricks. I was gonna mm. say, yeah, there might be some significance to it. What it is, I have no idea. But you're right. It was it was definitely an area of focus. For sure. Indeed can't wait for next week so much fun actually yeah. i can't wait i feel like decoding westworld will be tomorrow or wednesday that'll be exciting tied me over until uh until our next don't panic uh minute yep yeah yeah this has been your west your weekly westworld update here on from three <laughs> guys who sort of know what's going on uh, we're mostly paying attention yeah we're, we're we're basically the decoding westworld pre-show like we get you warmed up and then they'll really tell you what's going on yeah. Go go listen to them. They're the pros. Um wonderful. All right. Well, uh then I guess we'll we'll wrap up for this evening. Um as usual, you guys out there know how it works. Don't panic.io is our website. It's great. You can go there and get all the past episodes, the audio, the video, the pics are all there. Uh and of course, information on how you can subscribe or anywhere podcasts are at iTunes, Overcast, really anywhere you can get them. Uh you are just fumbly bumbly tonight colby i really am uh you can also of course follow us at don't panic show on twitter and on facebook at don't panic show uh and you can email us don't panic show at gmail.com we love your feedback send pictures to dan of your funky islands um yes he, he's look at him he's just grinning ear to ear um i will also briefly uh remind people of course of the other programs that we do, of course, Up for Debate, myself and Matt at upfordebate.tv. We just published the 2018 summer movie draft. The league is open. The first movie's out. $257 million for Avengers in its opening weekend. Will that lead Sarah to the promised land of the championship back-to-back? Who knows? We'll see. It's a, certainly a strong opening. Um, but but will that be enough? You'll have to tune in at upfordebate.tv. Also, Game Nights, where we're playing Dungeons & Dragons. I promise I've been swamped, so there has been a new episode in a little while. But... This week, there will be a fresh episode, uh, a, a mini spoiler alert. Um, we get crabs. So uh, it's uh, you can check that out at gamenights.tv. And by get crabs, I mean get beat up by crabs. Right. We get That's, crabbed. Yes, exactly. So uh, gamenights.tv is that site. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us. That does it for us. We'll be back next Monday with more tech news and good times. On behalf of Colby and Dan, I'm Sean. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you more time. We'll see you more next time for more Don't Panic podcast. Good night.